The last thing that we're going to go over in this section is symmetry. So hopefully you know what we're talking about. If not, let's go ahead and define it for you. For something to be symmetric, that means it matches on both sides. So if I were to fold it over a line, it would match on both sides of the line. Or there's actually another way for it to be symmetric, especially in algebra, is if we can rotate it around an axis. So let's look at the three different ways that symmetry is defined here. So the first way is it can be symmetric to the y-axis. So I've given you plenty of pictures here that we see in day-to-day -day life of where something is symmetric to the y-axis. Meaning, if I were to fold it over the y-axis, if this was graphed on a plane, it would match on both sides. So I would fold my butterfly over my y-axis here, and it would be the same. I could fold my star over this vertical axis, and it would be the same. I could fold this tree picture over my vertical y-axis, and it match. Um, Humans are, interestingly enough, symmetric to the y-axis, meaning that both sides of our body are exactly the same, whether we're looking at the front or the back view. Okay. And then if we look at the alphabet, we have quite a few letters that are symmetric to the y-axis. If I fold them over a line down the middle, they would match on both sides. So again, symmetric to the y-axis is when you fold it down the vertical axis in the middle and it match on both sides. So similarly enough, we can also have something symmetric to the x-axis, meaning we can fold it over a horizontal or our x-axis and it match there. Now this tiger picture is not perfect because I don't have an exact straight horizontal line, but you can see that we're pretty close here. I can fold it over that and it match. Or this scorpion, I can fold it over my horizontal or my x-axis. For my alphabet, I can fold it along any one of these letters here and it match from the top and the bottom. Now those are pretty obvious to see. The one that might be a little bit new to you is when something is symmetric to the origin. Now that doesn't mean I can fold it over an axis that means I rotate it 180 degrees, or I rotate it halfway around the circle, and it matched the same way. So all of these here are symmetric to the origin. If I were to take them, I take a point on this end, and rotate it 180 degrees, which means halfway around the circle, it would match up with a point on that end. So I just took a low point, but I could take any point in my grapefruit for this example, rotate it halfway around the circle, and it'd be the same as the point over there. Same thing over here on this cathedral window. I could take any point on it, rotate it halfway around the circle, and it matched with a different point there. Now we see this a lot in flowers. We see that flowers are symmetric. If I pick any point on them and I rotate it halfway around the circle, it would also have a point over here that matches. And we see that here with these leaves pictures. I can pick any point, whether it be a tip of these leaves or a point on these leaves. If I rotate it halfway around, I end up with the opposite point on these leaves here. So there's lots of things in nature, as you can see by my pictures, that are symmetric to the y-axis, our vertical axis, the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and the origin. And we see we even have a few letters that are symmetric to the origin in the alphabet. If I flip-flop them around, they would look identical or be exactly the same. Okay, how does this help us with algebra? Well, we want to determine, if we're trying to graph something and they give us the function, we want to determine if it's symmetric or not. If it is, that helps us graph the other half of our graph. If we can draw one half of it and we know it's symmetric, that means we know the exact opposite half of the graph without doing any extra work or plotting any extra ordered pairs. So we can test to see if it's symmetric by using any one of these tests down here. The way that we test to see if it's symmetric to our y-axis or our vertical axis, like in the butterfly, is we substitute in a negative x in for the original x in the equation, 
And if we get an equivalent equation that tells it it is, in fact, symmetric to the y-axis. So notice we substitute a negative variable in for the opposite thing that we're looking for. If we're trying to find symmetric to the y-axis, I substitute in a negative x. Okay? If we want to find something symmetric to the x-axis, like our tiger picture, we plug in the opposite. So a negative y in for y, and if we get out the equivalent equation, then that is a symmetric to the x-axis. Now for the origin, since we're rotating it, we have to do both. Substitute in a negative x for x and a negative y for y. And, of course, if we get the same equation, then that tells us it is symmetric to the origin. Okay. Let's look at an example here. Now, I have given you the function y equals absolute value of x minus 5, but I've also graphed it for you over here. We want to determine whether this graph is symmetric to the y-axis, the x-axis, and or the origin. So it can actually be symmetric to more than one thing at a time. Now, we can determine by the visual over here which one it is, and hopefully you know right away that this one is, in fact, symmetric to the y-axis because I can fold it on my y-axis and it match on both sides. So we want to figure out how do we actually test for that. Okay. Let's do each of the tests individually to confirm or deny that it is symmetric to any one of these. So first, let's do our y-axis test. We do that by substituting in a negative x for x. So y equals the absolute value. Instead of my x, I'm going to substitute in my negative x. x minus 5. Now we want to simplify this if we can. If you can't, don't force it and just go from there. We know absolute value always makes things positive. So does it make sense to have something as the absolute value of a negative value? That doesn't make any sense at all because it will turn it into positive. Now we need to keep this absolute value here because we still don't know what our x variable in fact is. We just know that it's going to be positive. So the absolute value of x minus 5. Notice we end up with the exact same equation that we started out with, so that tells us that this is yes, it is symmetric to our y-axis. Okay, let's do this test for the other ones. Let's do our test for our x-axis then. We know what we do is we substitute in a negative y for y. So instead of my y over here, I'm substituting in a negative y. And that is equal to the absolute value of x minus 5. So the rest of my equation here, I keep exactly the same. So when I'm substituting, when I'm trying to check the symmetry to my x-axis, I only substitute in the negative y. If we simplify it, we can. We can't do anything with the negative and the y in this equation. So that means we've, in fact, altered our equation because we can't simplify it. So that tells us that this is no, it is not symmetric to the x-axis. Okay. For the origin, we substitute in both a negative y for y and a negative x for x. We see how it simplifies. We know that we can take the absolute value of the negative number here, even though we have to keep the absolute value, bring down my 5, and we know we cannot do anything with the negative y here. So we have to copy that down. Did that give us the exact equation that we started out with, the yellow equation here? The answer is no, because this equation has this extra negative involved. So that tells us that no, this is not symmetric to the origin. So our checks here should match with what we have visually. So visually, we saw that this was symmetric to the y-axis. Um, and then we confirmed that by using our test. And we confirmed that it was not symmetric to anything else by using these tests. 
Now, on your homework, it most likely won't give you the graph here, but you can always double check or you can always start with the graph and go from there. Um, if you want to know how to graph the absolute value on the calculator, let me show you that. So to find absolute value on your calculator, it's under the math button. You want to go over to this number or NUM, so push the right button. And option number one is absolute value. So you can hit one or you can hit enter. It will bring up the absolute value. You can type whatever you need inside the absolute value. And then you can push the over or the out button to type whatever you need on the outside of the absolute value. Now, of course, if we were doing this, we should be substituting this in for the y equals because we want to graph it. Um, but I'm going to let you try and do that on your own. If you have an older version of the calculator, it won't actually give you the official absolute value bars. It will only give you parentheses. So your graph will look like y1 equals, it will say abs for the absolute value of open parentheses. You type in x and you close the parentheses to represent you're closing the absolute value and then minus 5. And that's how you would get your calculator to do it from there. Okay. When we come back, I'm going to have two more examples for testing to see whether it's symmetric to the y-axis, x-axis, and or the origin.